Hey guys, I'm Glenn. How are you? Thanks for joining in. Glad to have you along practicing your design and drawing skills. You're awesome. Now you're going to want to see today's tutorial if you're interested in drawing buildings, in particular making buildings look old. I decided to take on this challenge because I wanted to learn how to draw old buildings as well. When I'm not confident in doing a drawing, I go to YouTube and look for someone that is practiced in that and I found Shu Rayner. He's got a really nice style, he's easy to follow, his work looks amazing and I'll leave the link down below. In his drawing here, Shu based it on an actual structure from a, a posh part of England called Cotswold and this structure, believe it or not, is for doves. So I've broken the drawing up into three different stages and it's an isometric drawing so it's using the splat angles and you can see as I slide the splat down Cool, let's go. Your starting point about halfway across the page come up two centimeters and that's your starting point. So we're going to place the splat on the starting point and we're going to draw down one side the center and from the left blip down and around as well. I'm going to pause there because we're not drawing a cube. We're going to mark off three centimeters. And by the way, if you've got one of the newer splats, I've marked in black the little centimeter markings. So we could measure off three centimeters, put the point of the splat on your three centimeters and draw in some more splat or isometric lines. I'm going to now mark off one whole splat length upwards. So that was just three lines, then place the splat again on the end of that line and repeat the same thing. Two lines there and the sides. Great. Here's where we draw in the top of our box. So two more lines towards you. Spin the splat and now we're drawing the two far edges. Line up those corners and draw it in. You don't need to draw the lines all the way to the corners. You won't need to tidy up these lines, leave them nice and light because they're just guidelines. We'll end up erasing most of them anyway. Let's begin our actual drawing with the ridges crossing over at the top. I'm putting a mark halfway along that line and the same thing on that one, halfway on that line and the remaining one. Great, now I'm gonna use a rule to connect those points and that's the ridge lines of the roof. A little metal box on each corner is where we're going to start. They're about half a centimetre roughly so let's mark off half a centimetre in that direction and then out the left angle and we'll go upwards as well. So that's what's going to be my little cube. So I'm drawing the top edges and then my vertical lines and for the far edges, spin the splat if you want a help in, um, in getting those angles right. All right, so there's my little box and I'm going to run an, an imaginary line or use the splat to help guide where you find the ones in the other corners. I'm drawing in the little metal box as you'd see from each side they're about half a centimetre as well, so same size. And we're going to connect from the top, that little point at the top down. So from that point, connect to the roof. And the same on the other side. From the ridge of the roof, connect it to the corner of the box. And that's pretty easy. And see so how we go on the other side. From the ridge down to the corner of the box, and same again. All right, that's looking great. What happens um, here is that we're copying that line, but we're moving it back as far as the metal box. So that'll be half a centimeter again. Let me show you. From that point, measure off half a centimeter. You can change all these measurements to suit yourself, by the way, for your design. And then join. Okay. So what's happening now is that that shape is going to be, um, it's going to need some thickness. So I'm drawing another line right beside that one, up and down. And that's the thickness of that part. 
this little um, piece of metal, it's like a pipe, and its job is to funnel the water away from the building so it's not dripping down over the building and washing the mortar away from in between the bricks and stones. Now I can complete the far edge of those little metal boxes and that one too. Looking at this line of the roof, it has a part or a copy line right at the back. So we're joining those two points together and the same on the other roof. Great, so if you've managed to do that, you have completed the trickiest part in this drawing. Well done. Probably time to stop and erase a few of the lines. So I'm putting a squiggle through all the lines I'm going to erase. There's three uh, ways you could do it. First, if you have a really um, sharp corner on your rubber, you might be able to carefully rub that out. Otherwise, roughly rub it out and then just be prepared to redraw in some of your drawing. And the third way might be to use an eraser shield or even a piece of paper to cover the lines that you want to keep and helps you just uh, bang on those lines you want to remove. Hey, notice how the small ellipse has a mark above and below. We're going to be using those. Let's have some fun drawing a structure on top of the roof. We're going to be using the small ellipse with those marks straight up and down or vertical. To begin, we'll give ourselves a guideline and make sure that's vertical and then we line up the marks on that. I'm going to center my first disc. It doesn't have any thickness yet. It's like a disc and I'm going to measure up for my first part say half a centimeter. So I'm only drawing half the ellipse in here because I know I would probably only have to rub or erase the rest out. Um, where it joins to the roof you get a funny little shape like that and there's actually some little square openings in that that I draw later that's somewhere else for the doves to fly in and out of. Now this is a part of a cylinder so I've gone up another centimeter and drawn in a cylinder and here's some little arch openings. It's like a little mini um, fancy structure for the doves and on top I imagine that bell shaped piece would be made from uh, some metal of some type something that doesn't rust. In heavy rain, we want to keep those doves dry. So this ridge capping is a row right on the top of the ridge that makes the rain run down one side or the other. And we draw those in with just some simple lines like that. At the front and the back of the roof, you can see we're drawing a little piece of metal and that keeps all the tiles in place. So that's sort of like a guttering, so the water will run down that metal and into those little collection boxes that we drew on each corner. Where those two shapes join, um, there will be a gap between the tiles. And I'm just running a wiggly line down there to represent that. I'm using the splat angle to give myself some guidelines. Now, um, because the tiles are really old, you probably don't want a really neat uh, ruled line. I'm purposefully pushing harder and then softer on my um, pencil there to get an old fashioned look. Now I'm going back in the other splat direction. See how the splat's straight up and down? And I just slide it down, draw that, then come back over it and draw your non-perfect line. So sometimes lines need to be not perfect to look perfect. Here I'm drawing in the detail that I missed earlier, little rectangular openings for the doves. Speaking of doves, I'm having my first go at drawing one of the residents a dove. So let's draw a head and a little body, pretty much any shape, but it's the little dovetail shaped tail that gives it away. When we add a beak and an eye, we're nearly there. Now the wings, when it's landing, sweep right back like that and the tips nearly touch. The top of the wing has a little bump like that. Shu Rayner has a great tutorial on how to draw doves so I would encourage you to go over and check that out and see how it's actually done properly. The round window is like a squashed circle that leans over. Let me show you how to do that. Hold your splat just like this so the bottom is level and then trace around that small ellipse and that's exactly the angle for the windows. This little line makes it look like it's 3D. You can see inside and there's the joins on the bricks. Great, let's do the same thing on the other side. You're going to need to flip the splat over, keep the bottom level again, center the ellipse 
on your dot and then draw in your window. Great, you're doing awesome. Under the roof is a line of funny shaped bricks. So draw some divisions, some marks, across, then come down and down and down. On the other side, you'll probably only see a little hint of those. Let's have a go on this side. Do your little divisions, any space you like, across, then come down, often on these older buildings, to show some decoration, in the corners we have massive blocks and some are narrow and some are wider. So let's draw one that looks kind of square, then we'll bring that line out and make a rectangle one. So we're using straight up and down lines and all the others are on the splat angle. So we're going a long and a short and a long and a short. The ends should roughly line up. Now we're going to go to the front. So I'm going to use the splat to line up uh, my blocks with the same joins at the back. And then I'm going to look at that. It's a short one. So here I'm going to start off with a long one. And then a short. Let's bring that one out long. Remember those lines on the ends of the blocks are all vertical. I'm bouncing those lines around the corner. And if I've got a long one there, I'll start with a short one on the next side and that one gets a long block. Can you see how it's working? Just start off drawing this really lightly until you get the idea. All right, that's certainly looking very old worldy. And on the last corner, there's my divisions. If you didn't get the divisions exactly right, you know, I don't think anyone's really going to notice. All right, let's go back to the practice drawing and see where we're up to. Uh, it looks like these arches are the next thing we need to draw. The arch needs to start on that line and finish on the same line. So come up and around, and then where that point meets the line, we're going to drop a line straight down. Good, so that's an arch opening. Let's do the same thing on the other side. Nice arch up and around. You can change the shape of your arch if you want. Now I'm dropping those two lines down and what I have is uh, it looks like an arch painted on the outside of a container. To make it look 3D, those are the lines that we need to use and they're on the splat angle. So find that point, line up your splat and then draw a short line out direction. Now come up, but not all the way. The last little bit angles in. Now let's do the same thing on the other side. Find that point, short line, come vertically up, but not all the way. It angles in towards the center. Would you like to add something else? Here's another decorative detail. This is on the guideline that we originally drew three centimeters up. I'm drawing another one parallel. That means like right beside and the same there. But this one, if you want to, uh, bounces around the corner. Like that. Great. Here I'm drawing in the joins of the blocks and the very bottom. I'm using the splat to get the angles. Do it really, really lightly. I actually like my drawing before I drew this detail in for some reason. To make it look like it's sitting on the ground, add a few little grass lines at the base. And of course, let's set the scene a little bit. Shu has um, drawn a sheep and I'm trying my best to copy a sheepy kind of look. To make this building look a bit old and weathered, we need to get rid of those straight lines. So I'm going to go over it and leave a little gap here and there. Sometimes there's gaps where the blocks join, sometimes there's little chips out of them. This is called the cutting line. Go right around your drawing with the darker line, makes it really stand out. The roof gets a special dark line too because it's overlapping part of the roof behind it. Here's where the, um, the edge of the field is. And um, I like the way Shu has the top of the trees drawn in just uh, like a silhouette. And notice how it slopes down towards the drawing. Now that I'm finished, I wonder for my next building if I could make it look even 
earlier, like a Gothic building. I'm sure you've all seen these old Gothic buildings with these gargoyles, these grotesque faces. They started off as being functional and that was a way to get the water um, to run away from the building and not drip down the side and ruin the uh, blocks. Something else, a design feature you notice about Gothic architecture is these beautiful pointed arches and some of them were very fancy. But there's one problem with massive arches. With the incredible weight of the building pushing down on the arch, they tend to spread out and push sideways. And to stop the walls falling down, architects started to use what's called flying buttresses. Let's have a rough look at some Gothic um, architecture on my building. We could have maybe a puppy dog gargoyle in one corner. And in this corner is a kangaroo gargoyle. That's where the, so the water comes out through the mouth. And let's add a big pointed arch in the sides. Um, maybe all the detail can come later. Now let's imagine for a second to stop those walls from spreading outwards. Let's build some big heavy stone structures each side. And then we join them with some stone that's flying out. So flying buttresses. The problem is with a long building, I'm going to need to add um, more flying buttresses all the way back. So it actually became um, quite beautiful. Notre Dame and lots of cathedrals and old buildings have them. They like to build their buildings high with really fancy roofs and all that sort of thing. To add a little bit of colour, Shu Rainer uses some beautiful watercolours, but you need special paper. If you're just using photocopier paper like me, you could get a little bit of pastel. It's like a really soft chalk. And get a tissue and just rub on a little bit of colour. I'm going to use an orange, uh, just a hint in those sections that might be getting a little bit of shadow, just for a little bit of difference, so for an, an interest there. To represent the tree line, I'm using a slightly darker green now. I don't have a lot of choice with my pastels. Um, by the way, sometimes the uh, cheaper ones actually work better because they're, they're soft when you rub them. You don't want the really hard ones. Um, it's a bit of a khaki green, but it, um, I'm trying my best to copy Shoe Rainer here. So there's my tree line, looks okay. Don't go overboard. Sometimes the less color you put on, the better. So there you have it. Shoe Rainer, you're a legend. Thank you for coming up with this tutorial. I've learned something. I hope you've learned something. If you know of something else that you'd like me to try to draw using the splat, then leave it in the comment below or send me an email. I'm Glenn. Thanks very much for watching. Bye.